Welcome, church, and welcome those that are here in the room with us and those joining us online. It is so good to be with you to worship our King. Why don't you stand with us? I'd love to pray just before I read to you a little bit of Scripture that God has laid on my heart this morning. Lord Jesus, we want to acknowledge You for who You are this morning. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. There is none like You. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord God, You are our Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. You are Emmanuel, God with us. You are so good, Lord, and You are worthy of our praise. Your Word says that when two or three gather in Your Name, there You are. And so we acknowledge that You are here with us this morning, God, and we thank You for Your presence. We thank You for Your nearness. Lord God, this morning, we do not want to just go through the motions. We want to acknowledge You. We want to praise You. We want to glorify You. We want to have an encounter, a fresh encounter with the living God. And so we say You are so welcome. Holy Spirit, would You come and would You move amongst us? Would You speak to us this morning? We pray that You would be glorified in our time together. We love You, Lord. Amen. Hey church, how good has this series been? I have just been loving the reminder that the church goes so much further than the four walls that we meet in on a Sunday morning. The body of Christ is vast and she is beautiful in all of her expressions. And we get to play a small part in that. And so this morning, what I wanted to do was to remind you that what we're doing this morning is actually joining in in something so much greater. Not only are we joining in with the other uh, churches around our city, across this nation, across the world in worshipping our God, but also we're joining in in the never-ending worship sesh that's going on in heaven. And so I wanted to read to you a couple of verses from Revelation. In Revelation 4, it says, Day and night, they never stop saying, this is the angels in heaven, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Later in chapter 5, we read, Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousands. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and praise. And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth, under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying to Him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honour and glory and power forever and ever. Hallelujah. Church, there's some serious worship going on in the heavenlies and we get to join in on that praise session this morning. Declare the goodness of our God and let's sing to our King. Come on. Woo! Put your hands together, church.
no shadow that has ever overcome your light. There is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won, oh, we've already won. Disappointment and break on, every Jack. chain. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off this fear as I sing out your name. Oh, victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off this fear. praise this morning, a spirit of joy, that we have the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. 
Lord, that you turn our mourning into joy by the power of your Spirit. That as we come, Lord, downcast in our hearts for all sorts of reasons, and yet, Lord, we discover that there's joy in the Lord, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so, Lord, we ask as we gather this morning, we ask that you meet with us. Lord, minister amongst us. We thank you for the, just the love and the mercy and the gentleness of your Holy Spirit amongst us. Be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before you sit down, I need to turn around and just give someone a warm, hearty handshake or a slap on the shoulder or something. And then you may be seated. A very warm welcome to you all this morning. Who needs a warm welcome this morning? I think it was something like five degrees or six degrees this morning when, uh, when we got up. Goodness me, a warm welcome on this fresh winter's morning. Uh, great to have you here with us and a special welcome to all of you who are joining us online, uh, wherever you are across our state or nation or across the world. Great to have you with us. And uh, as we release our children to their MPK program this morning, let me just pray. Let's just pray for our children this morning. Father, we do thank you for our children. And uh, Lord, as they head off now, we pray that they might know that they are loved, that they are precious in your sight, that they belong here as a part of this church, such an important part of this church family. And so meet with them this morning, we pray, and reveal yourself to them in new and fresh ways. We thank you for their leaders who serve so faithfully. Help them this morning. Use them for your glory. We ask in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. All right, go. <laughs> Have a wonderful time, you guys. There's a dog here this morning. Isn't that just fantastic? Special welcome to our dog friend. Love to have you with us. As they go, look, we're just so blessed this morning to have uh, as our special guest this morning, our guest speaker, Pastor Margaret Court, and her husband Barry with us this morning. Welcome to you. I'm not sure if they've had a fight this morning. There seems to be a chair between them, but... Uh, <laughs> We're glad that you're here, really glad you're here. And, uh, and also Pastor Margaret Edgar, uh, Anne, Sir Anne Edgar. Who's Margaret Edgar? Not sure. Anne Edgar as well here from Victory Life. Welcome to you as well. Wonderful to have you with us. Look, if, um, if you're new here this morning or visiting or just looking to connect, uh, find out more about our church family here, then uh, there's a connect point of all things in the foyer, which exists for your benefit. And uh, just encourage you to make your way there uh, after the service and ask any questions you may have and find out ways that you can connect with the life of our church here. Of course, there's tea and coffee in the foyer, or you might like a barista coffee at our Sunday cafe, which today is going to be open until half past 12. Extended shopping hours, I think, for, uh, for the sake of a special day here this morning. So <laughs> wonderful thing. All right, a couple of things just to let you know about. Uh, the end of financial year. That's exciting, isn't it? Uh, yeah, woo All the accountants celebrating. Uh, just a reminder that if you give to our Mercy Reach Foundation or to our building fund or to our college, that giving uh, is tax deductible. And so uh, just make sure we have your correct email address and receipts will be sent to you via email for that. This week also in our Infused Cafe, um, $1 from every drink sold will go towards the provision of fresh water in a village in Papua New Guinea through our Mercy Reach partner, Mork Water, which is just a brilliant idea, isn't it? So let that, that, that be an incentive to you to come and buy a coffee or a drink of some sort uh, during the course of this coming week and, uh, and know that you're helping to provide fresh water. Let's also be praying for our college open night this Thursday evening, 5 p.m. till 7 p.m. You're welcome to come along and uh, learn more about uh, uh, our college, your college, as we have an open night. And uh, let's be in prayer for that event as well on Thursday evening. All right, we had an amazing night here last night at our prayer concert. We had, I reckon, around 200 people gathered from around the city uh, for an evening of prayer and worship right here. 
And uh, let me tell you, it was just a beautiful time, all part of the lead up to the World Prayer Assembly, which is coming up in October. You know something about that already, but let's uh, take a look again, see what that's about. We've learned to harness the power of the atom, but very few of us have learned how to fully develop the power of prayer. We have not yet learned that a man is more powerful on his knees than behind the most powerful weapons we have ever developed. We've not learned that a nation is more powerful when it unites in earnest prayer to God. We have not discovered that the answer to our problems can be through contact with God. Pray without ceasing. Paul didn't write this to a person, he wrote this to a church. And what is possible if a church decides to pray without ceasing? He's asking us to pray because prayer actually works. Ephesians 3.20 says, He is able to do more than we can ask or imagine according to His power that is at work within us. We believe that there is an assignment here in this great land. There's a prophetic purpose and a gathering of prayer. Four days in October, October 3rd through the 6th, and I don't believe this is just for Perth. Perth is hosting, but this is actually a summons across Australia, New Zealand, and all of Oceania. There is a moment to raise a sound to heaven, a voice of agreement and intercession for breakthrough and revival in all these lands. You're very quiet about that, aren't you? That's exciting, isn't it? Yep. Wow, that is exciting. It's an amazing opportunity, actually, for our city to be hosting uh, such an event. Uh, steered largely, actually, by uh, Pastor Margaret with a team around her, but uh, we believe together that this is a God-given assignment for our city. So let me encourage you to be praying about this event as people gather from around the globe around the nation, around our city here even, and uh, even more than that, Gesundheit, even more than that, um, you can register and be part of what God is doing. All right, excellent. We're going to pray now, and uh, as we pray, just going to invite, um, there's a little team heading off tomorrow morning to Cambodia, Mark and Jane and a couple of others. Would you just come down? Where are you? Yeah, good on you. Why don't you, in fact, why don't you just come down the front here? Bronwyn, is there somebody else? Yep, excellent. These guys are heading off and I uh, just thought great for us to be uh, praying for them as they go. There's a couple of extras as well. They've already made their way up, Helen and James Wong and uh, Trevor is also going. But uh, let's just pray for them and commit them to the Lord as they go. God, our Father, we pray for these faithful servants of yours who travel to Cambodia tomorrow to visit our centre, a transform Cambodia centre. We thank you for the, all that you are doing through this amazing work up in Cambodia, this centre that we've been a part of for many, many years. But we thank you for these folk, for their obedience to you, for their willingness to serve in this way. And we do pray, Lord, for safe travel for them. We pray for good health, we pray for effective ministry. Lord, do a great work through them, we pray. But also be at work in them, opening them to new things in Christ, to fresh revelation, to new insights into the work of the kingdom in this amazing country. Bless them, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. I'm just going to continue in prayer and... Um, as we pray, let me just share with you some words from Philippians 4. No doubt very familiar words, but wonderful words. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, 
which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Let's bow in prayer. Lord, I pray in particular this morning for those who come into this place with a heaviness of heart for whatever reason. Lord, help us together to internalise and put into practice this command from the Scripture to rejoice in the Lord always. Lord, we don't rejoice in our circumstances. Often the circumstances in our lives cause us great grief and sadness and trouble. But Lord, we rejoice in you. We rejoice in the Lord always because you are good, because you are faithful, because we can put our trust in you. And we thank you that we don't need to be anxious about anything, but in every situation, in, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, we can present our requests to you. And so we do that this morning, Lord. We bring you the requests of our heart. We bring you those things that lay heavily on us, family matters, health challenges, grief of all kinds. We bring these things to you. We thank you, Lord, for the peace of God which transcends all understanding and which guards our hearts. Father, we thank you for the blessing it is to have Pastor Margaret, come and share with us this morning. We thank you for her faithfulness over many years, for your goodness and your faithfulness to her. As she comes to us and brings your word, Lord, this morning, as she leads us in a time of communion, we ask again that you meet with us, that you minister amongst us and with us. And Lord, as we come to give, we're just reminded again, Lord, that you our Jehovah Jireh, God, our provider. We look to you to provide for our needs in every way, both personally and as a church family. We just trust in you, Lord. We surrender ourselves to you. We surrender to you our finances, our income, Lord. We recognise that you are the one who gives us the ability to create wealth. And so we willingly, Lord, give back to you this morning. As an act of worship, we bring an offering to you with hearts filled with thankfulness. And all these things, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's give together. There's buckets. If there's a bucket under your aisle, you can pass that along if you wouldn't mind and give along the way. If you're visiting with us, don't feel any obligation to give and uh, just be reminded that there are many ways of giving up on, the pl um, up on the screen there. God bless you as you give. I tell you what, teenagers are a blessing, aren't they? Hmm. You are a blessing, teenagers. We're thankful for you. High schoolers, why don't you head off now to Keystone and uh, God bless you as you go. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Let's stand to our feet, church, and invite the Holy Spirit to move amongst us this morning.
Sweetest of love.
name of Jesus, the name above all names, but at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that He is the Lord, that is the Jesus that we serve. bold <laughs> just get a sense that I'm um, in what what the Lord's been telling me this week in, in praying in preparation for this morning and just in what Nick has been praying um, some people came with a heaviness this morning and I just get a sense that God God wants some breaks and change so um, I think it's quite fitting the next song that we're going to sing so speak Jesus Church, there is so much power in the beautiful name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, chains are broken. At the name of Jesus, sickness is healed. At the name of Jesus, demons are cast out. At the name of Jesus, lives are transformed. At the name of Jesus, people are free, set free. I am set free in the name of Jesus. And so as we sing this this morning, church, lean into the authority that we have been giving through the death and resurrection of King Jesus. And let's declare the powerful, beautiful, wonderful Name of Jesus over whatever it is that is on your heart, whatever you are walking through in this season. And I'm believing this morning that God is gonna move in power amongst us. Does that sound good, church? All right. We love you, Lord. Have your way. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. And over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name is love Break every stronghold Shine through the shadow
in the darkness over every enemy. Come on, church. And Jesus, for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over Jesus. Wonderful declaration. Why don't you grab a seat? God bless you. Thanks to the team for leading us this morning. 
Well, it's my pleasure to introduce our uh, guest speaker this morning, who comes to us, of course, in the context of our uh, One Church series, uh, where we've been blessed this month by a number of different voices from around the city. And uh, today, our guest speaker, as you know, is Pastor Margaret Court, who uh, I must say has uh, become something of a friend uh, to me, and uh, actually to Margie and I. She's just shown great kindness to us, particularly as we've got to know her over the last couple of years. But of course, um, she's known for making history in the world of tennis. Did you realise that? (laughs) First Australian to win Wimbledon, imagine that. And she amassed an incredible 64 Grand Slam tournament victories. Um, One of the great, one of the great sportswomen of the 20th century. In her life after tennis, she continues to shine and she's the founder and senior pastor of Victory Life Centre for the last 25 years, a church that uh, actually continues to do extraordinary things um, across our city. Their outreach program assists over 600 households each week, distributing around 3,000 meals every week to the needy in our community. Again, Pastor Margaret, we're so blessed, so thankful that you're here with us. Why don't you come now? Let's give her a warm welcome. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's wonderful to be here with you. And uh, I honour Pastor Nick for inviting me and my husband Barry and Pastor Anne. We've been friends for 60 years, Pastor Anne and I. She's headed up all our prayer for many years. And uh, so we've prayed much for this city, this nation. And, uh, you know, we're very blessed to live in the nation. How many of you appreciate our nation? We need to pray for it, amen. So, uh, you know, I... Th- I feel in uh, this time, it's such a time for our nation. Um, you know, this great south land of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we as Christians, uh, it's such a time to stand together. And I know Pastor Nick this morning asked me to uh, bring a message on prayerful and particularly out of uh, John 17, And so we're going to go from there. But I I just, you know, I've been a prayer uh, ever since I I came to know Jesus. Uh, I gave my heart to Christ when I was number one in the world in tennis. And people look at me and think, oh, uh, you know, you had fame, you had money. Uh, You know, at that time I had everything. I was married. Uh, But I always knew my, my gift in sport was from God. I knew that as a little girl, people would say, why are you so good? I say, it's a gift from God. And I went to church every Sunday, even when I was in the Wimbledon final or the French final all around the world. And, uh, you know, I, I'd go, I was from Catholic background. Uh, back then, uh, I'd go because I thought if I didn't go, I might lose. <laughs> and so, you know, it was a part of my life, but I knew God was there. Uh, I knew sometimes, you know, when I was playing, there was uh, just this, I'd say, I'm absolutely exhausted. And I'd say, God, please help me. And somehow this strength would come. I always knew he was there. And, you know, it was sort of latter part of my career. I remember I was in France and they're speaking in Latin and French. And I didn't understand a word of it. I said, God, if you're really there, where are you? I want to know you. And I remember coming back a home here, and, and um, Pastor Anne, um, I said to her, I said, something's happened to you, what is it? She said, I went along to a meeting, gave my heart to Christ. And I remember following them, this group of Catholics wanted to learn and grow in the things of God. I remember going and going to a meeting and uh, went, and I just knew they had something I didn't have. And I went along and I just, went forward and gave my heart to Christ. Well, I had an encounter uh, with Christ. I didn't know the Bible, didn't know anything about it, wasn't brought up on the Bible really. But 
I knew Easter, I knew Christmas, but I'd never really given my heart to him. And uh, when I did give my heart to him, I just right at that time, prayer intercession overtook me. And my life, I became a prayer right there and then. And I remember just after that, I were going back and uh, we went to Japan. And I just share this little bit because it's so important. And I really believe today uh, that song I love, Speak the Name of Jesus, I speak his name wherever I go. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And, and I remember going to Japan and, and there was a, oh, I don't like it when the Holy Spirit does this to me. <laughs> Amen. And uh, I remember going to Japan. There was a whole group of press people there because I was number one in the world. And, and uh, somebody said, because I'd been in the press here, how I'd given my heart to Christ and um, became a born-again Christian. And a uh, whole group of press people and, one, and somebody said, oh, something's happened in your life. And I said, yes, I gave my heart to God. And then this other voice said, which one? And because we know there's many gods. And I said, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, I never forgot that because I even find the church today, it's easy to say God because there's many gods, the Hindu God, the Buddhist God, the Muslims have a God. You know, there's so many different gods today. And we need to say the God of our Lord Jesus Christ that Jesus is alive because all power is in that name. We're to have faith in that name. Healing's in that name. Forgiveness is in that name. Deliverance is in that name. Salvation's in that name. There's no other way. There's not many roads to heaven. It is through our Lord Jesus Christ because we're in covenant. There was only one blood that was shed was through our Lord Jesus Christ. And here in uh, John 17, let's just turn there or... You're going to watch it up on the screen. But I still like my Bible and uh, I like to read it. And, uh, you know, it's uh, just from there. He said I'd, in verse uh, 20, 17, John 20, 17, 20, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, and they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. You know, that really stood out. Jesus has to be real in us. That he, he stands out. Do you know that we walk in a room, that we carry his presence, that we carry his love, that we're not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a world out there waiting to hear about Jesus. They're on the highway to hell. And if the church doesn't rise and start to stand and be a voice, the world gets darker. That spirit of intimidation overtakes. And you know, there's children out there wanting to know. We know what's happening in the schools. I'm not going to go all over the place, but we know what our children are facing today. And it's you and I as older people that we need to stand for righteousness and truth and justice in this time. We need to say what God says. You and I'll pass away. Heavens and earth will pass away, but his word won't. What is coming out of our mouths? What are we carrying? Let's read on here and just see. Verse 22, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them. We carry his glory. His glory is in us. If we don't become conscious of the Christ indwelling and living with us, if he's not bigger than everything that's happening on the outside, there's something wrong with the church. He lives in us. The glory which you gave me, I have given them, but they, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them and you in me, and they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me. There's a world out there wanting to know about Jesus. And have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, and they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved me because for before the foundation of the world, he knew you in your mother's womb. 
He knew you'd be sitting here today. Don't come to church and be a spectator. Come and be a participator. You know, when I played tennis, I was a participator. I wasn't a spectator. There's something I had to do. I had to train. I had to be equipped to do something well that I loved from a little girl. I trained. I had great coaches. I had people that sowed into my life. Your pastor sows and the pastors here sow into your life. They want you to be strong. They want you to be free from fear. They don't want you hurt. They don't want you broken. They don't want you going through stuff because he's given us the word. You and I'll pass away, but his word won't. And when his word becomes a part of our lives, it becomes an anointing within us. Christ, the anointed one, lives within us. He wants us to walk in victory when? Here on earth, as it is in heaven. How often we said the Our Father, let it be here on earth as it is in heaven. He wants us to know Him when he, we go to bed, when we lie down, when we get up. He wants us to know His presence. He wants His Word to be a part of our, our lives because Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh. And there in 24, Father, I desire they also whom you have gave me, may be with me where I am, and they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love which you loved me may, me, may be in them, and I in them." You know, that, those scriptures, read them. I'm, I'm glad Pastor Nick asked me to read those. Because if you start to study that out, even in uh, verse 11, it says in 17, Now I no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through, through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Who wants his body to be one in him. Can we see Jesus in one number? And I, I praise God that you, you have a pastor here that does so much in the city. You know, he's brought a great unity. He's part of that and a group of us together uh, we've become to honour and respect one another, the calls that are on our lives. It's not because one is Baptist or one is Catholic or Anglican or Pentecostal or whatever there's a name because many, many years ago when I first started the church, the Lord showed me and, and you know the church really is a man's world and here am I coming out of sport. I never wanted to be a pastor. It's the last thing I wanted to be. I'd go and share my testimony and Jesus all over the nation and I'd go and stay with pastors and I'd finish up ministering to them. Pray for your pastor. Pastors go through a lot. And it's so important. You think, oh, they're up there preaching the God. But no, they go through a lot. Because if the enemy can take your pastor out, he's got the church. See, pastors, pray for the pastors of the city. We've got a wonderful, wonderful unity in this city compared to any other uh, city in this nation or this nation. And that's why I believe one of the reasons we're having the World Prayer Assembly here but I remember I had a dream and I, I've shared this with the pastors, but I believe the body of Christ needs to hear it. We need to stand together and be united. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And we don't need to let the world dictate to us and speak about everything and criticise and murmur and everything else. We need to pray for our leaders. The Lord says in the Scriptures, first of all, pray for those who are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. Why? Because we have an enemy out there. And he doesn't want this great Southland of the Holy Spirit to come to Christ. 
What other nation has ever had a word like that prophesied over their nation? This nation is marked. This Oceania area is marked. We looked and we hear rumours of wars out there and there's been wars. Well, normally when God's about to do something, the other one will start to flex his muscles and the church will start to look at it instead of looking at Jesus and trusting Jesus and his word and saying, rain down your mercy, Lord. We're to walk here on earth, he says, as it is in heaven. We're to know him here. And I had this dream many years ago. And we've been, I've been pastoring now 27 years. And I just, in that early years, I think the Lord thought I, I needed it because I looked at the body of Christ and it was so competitive. And I was sitting in heaven and laughing. I was looking down at earth. And uh, I thought, I said to the Lord, why can't we be like this down here? There was so much joy. And I was looking at the pastors and they were all looking at one another. Well, I wonder how many they've gotten. I wonder, look at them. They've got so many chairs. And, they, and there was all this talk looking from one to another. And I said, I said to the Lord, this is more competitive than the tennis circuit. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he said to me, the only reason you're here is because of my name. Yes. Not because of any denomination, not where you're brought up in or whatever, but because of the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you think about it, if we were all speaking that name and we were sharing that name, wherever we go, the name of Jesus, that we carry the love of Jesus, that we're one in him. You've got to remember here in John, it's still in the Old Testament. He hadn't gone to the cross. What he fulfilled at the cross for you and me was to walk in the now. We're not, a, we're not under the law. I always say, well, the law is here. The law is works. And you get over on this side of the cross that we live in is grace. Why? Because he loves the drug addict, the alcoholic, the man in the gutter. We put out 120 tonnes of food a week into community and it's got worse. There's more and more people in great needs. And you go down there and you see every type of person come in there, but Jesus loves them. He gave his life for them. And it's by grace through faith. He fulfilled everything at the cross for you and I to walk in at when? Now. Why? To fulfill his will in the earth. We are his feet. We are his mouthpiece. We are his hands. The Lord has always, has already brought us into a oneness in him. If you read that there in John, it says, that all, and then in John 17 says that all of them may be one. This experience expresses the one of Christ's deepest desires for his people as a whole. He mentions it four times just in John 17. For unity is a primary factor in accomplishing God's purposes and confirming the truth of the message of Jesus Christ. We're already one. We need to look at one another and say, Jesus is within each and every one of us. If we have problems, it's often the spirit behind it. It's not the person themselves. We need to pray for one another. Pray for those who persecute you. You know, we're to walk in forgiveness, to be quick to forgive. That we start to act and we start to see and to know the Christ. Even look at the world and start praying for them because somebody prayed that you come to Christ. I always remember a lady wrote a letter to me years after I was born again and I was still playing tennis and she was in Papua New Guinea right up in the mountain. She was a missionary there and the Lord laid her, laid me on her heart. She prayed for me. Somebody gave birth to you to come into the kingdom. That's why prayer is such a key. I was an intercessor from the time I was born again. I didn't know what I, I was doing. And I, I remember when the children were little, I had, we had our son when I was still playing. 
and then I had another one. But after the second one, I went back into tennis and I, I probably after my son, I had one of my best years. I won 24 out of 24 tournaments, 23 out of 24 tournaments. <laughs> Amen. But, you know, I went back in there and, and, and then had a second that decided to finish. And then Barry and I, we had four children. And I remember I used to get up in the night and pray when they were asleep. And I remember I'd be praying and we looked out over the city and uh, I'd, I'd, in my spirit, I'd see these babies, just like, you know, when you have a look at a picture of a baby and an ultrasound and in the womb, I'd see all these babies. And I'd say, Lord, I don't need any more babies. I've got four. <laughs> well, I didn't know the Bible. I didn't know anything about prayer and intercession. But I'd see these babies and I'd be weeping. I'd be weeping for babies and I'd see them and, and, and I was weeping and praying for souls. You know, church, we need to come back to some of those things. Paul said, I pray that Christ be formed in them. But then he said, I pray more that, I, I pray that Christ be formed in them. But he, first of all, he said, I, I pray that Christ be birthed in them. And then he said, I pray that Christ be formed in them. So we, we give birth. We pray. We travail the people. That's why it's so important to love the na your nation, to pray for your nation. This is the great south land of the Holy Spirit. Nothing happens without prayer, and I know I'm nearly running out of time. So I just want to read something here uh, that I, I wrote down that I wanted to just bring forth here. And uh, every true revival recorded in history broke through racism and doctrinal division. They were birthed in prayer when the miracle power of God, his presence, his glory, fills an area. All the divisions come tumbling down because they're the things of the flesh. So much, so many things hold us that are things of the flesh. That's why we need to have intimacy. We need to have prayer. You know, when I go through difficult times, I just go in and get into prayer with the Lord. And somehow I push in, I push in prayer and you just know you come to a place in breakthrough and you get the breakthrough in the spirit. And then you know everything's gonna be all right. You've given birth to, you've come through. That's why God loves us so much. That's why we're one in Him. He's one in us and we're one with one another. Why? Because it's a spiritual oneness. We can never really build that oneness. You yeah, praise God, we can have dinners and connect groups and everything and we can learn to trust one another. But you know what? When we get home to heaven, we're just going to be one and we're going to look at one another when we're in heaven. And that's what I said to Jesus when I had that vision. We're going to get home and when we get to heaven, we're all going to look at one another and think, why didn't we get together on earth? How powerful. What a powerful group of people here. Amen. What a powerful group. What you carry. Christ the anointed one. You've got the Godhead on the inside of us to destroy every yoke. Sickness has no hold of us. Jesus died and we're going to take communion just in a minute. Jesus died for the whole man physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially in every area. He wants you to be successful here. He's already made you his champion. Amen. We're not trying to be. We're over on this side of the cross. He's already made us a champion. Why? Because he wanted to bring you and I back into that place that Adam and Eve had before the fall, before sin and sickness came into the world. He walked with them. He talked with them. He had fellowship with them. And that's why he came into the earth through his son, Jesus Christ, to die, to bring you and I back into that place. You know, you think about Jesus when he was in Gethsemane there and he was weeping, not my will, but your will. He was looking through the cross. He knew his destiny. Do you know your destiny? 
Are you praying your destiny? The Holy Spirit will show you things to come. He wants you to walk in it. He'll show you your life ahead, what He has for you. Jesus saw you and me through the cross. He saw saw us seated with the Father. It took Him to the cross. He made you and I righteous the day we gave our heart to Christ. He brought us into that relationship to stand with Him. We're in the grace of God. We're already by grace through faith positioned with Him. How much He loves us. That's why He wants to have fellowship. That's why He wants to have relationship. That's why we push into Him when the times, what we carry, that we have a word for somebody else out there. We should all have a word for one another of encouragement. He's only going to give to you to be edifying, encouraging and uplifting. What a powerful people. What champions we are that he's made us. I'll stand over here because it's like he's already made you and I a champion. And most of us never know it until we grow in the knowledge of the word of God, what he fulfilled. He fulfilled all at the cross for us to walk in the fulfilment of it now. Why? To fulfil his will in the earth. You're not a nobody, you are a somebody. And everybody, God is no respecter of persons. He wants us to walk in it, amen. Well, we're going to, we're going to take communion together because my time is up and I only got one page, so that's all right. Amen. So why don't we take out our communion and, and um, you know, I honour and respect when I come into another church and if a pastor, you have a time, you do that time and I'd like to just pray out and over you too. But is there anybody there that you don't have any elements or just put your hand up and somebody will, uh, there's a lady over there in the, over there, there's a lady right over the other side over there. Anybody else? Just put your hand up. Okay, and way up the back over there, there's another man. Okay, we'll just wait a minute. And There's a lady through there, yeah. Also, would you just like to put your hand up so they can see you? Yeah. Over there, there's a lady in the white jacket. There we go. Amen. I just want you to take, hold the bread up, which represents the Lord's body. And just close your eyes and picture what Jesus really did and fulfilled at the cross. He saw you through the cross when He was in Gethsemane. He knew He was going to the cross. He saw through the cross, He saw you and me seated with Him. He made us righteous. But you know, if you look at what His body fulfilled, that every whiplash, those 39 stripes on His back represented every sickness in the world. You may be out there, you have sickness in your body. You know, you might have had a doctor's report that you have cancer. You know, Jesus took our infirmities and sicknesses. He took cancer and He gave you His health. That's how much He loves us. The reality of communion. His body was broken. Every whiplash, those thorns in the head were to have a sound mind. You know, in the Scriptures, He's already given us everything it says. We have the mind of Christ. Let let this mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus. Just uh, just as we take a communion, we take of His body. Just partake of Him. Just do that. He did that exchange. He paid the price for you and me. The reality of it, what He fulfilled for you and me to walk in it now. Father, we thank You for Your healing mercies. And we thank You, Lord Jesus, for what You did for us. Oh, we just thank You, Lord, for Your healing power flowing through every person's body out there, Father. 
Just see it on Him, whatever you're going through. Might be a back problem. Just thank Him. Thank You, Lord Jesus. You took pain. You took sickness. You took disease. You took infirmity. For me to walk in divine health now, to fulfil Your will in the earth. Let's partake. Lord Jesus, we just thank you. Thank you for your presence. We thank you for your mercy and your compassion for all mankind. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. As we partake of the grape juice, Father, we just thank you. Represent your blood, our covenant, that we're covenant people covenant with you, but a covenant with one another. We just thank you, you made us one, one in you. We thank you, you've forgiven us of our sins. You washed them away. You wiped them away. You cleansed us. You healed us through your blood. You made us righteous through your blood. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, if there's anything there, just give it to Him. Don't hold on to anything. Don't hold on to unforgiveness or anything. Deal with it quickly. Because it'll hold you. It won't affect anybody else. It affects you. Father, we just thank You that we're blood washed. We thank You that we have that covenant. In Jesus' Name, Amen. And Lord, I just thank You for this church. I thank You for every person here. I thank You, Lord, You have them in the palm of Your hand. I just thank You, Holy Spirit, that You touch lives right at this moment as we've taken communion. We just thank You, Father. Oh, we just thank you. You know, I, I just really sense that some people that just know that he has forgiven you. Don't hold on to stuff. You don't need to keep repenting of it. He heard you the first time. But as you renew your mind to the Word of God, as you think like God thinks and meditate on His Scriptures, and allow it to wash you, allow it to sink into your heart. God wants to give you greater revelation, understanding in your own personal life. You're never alone. He doesn't want you to fear. He wants you to walk in faith. You already have a spirit of faith. Release it out of your mouth. Life and death are in the power of the tongue and you eat the fruit of it. He said, you have the victory. I've already given you the victory. Don't stay in the problem. Make requests made known unto me, not the problem. I just feel like some people, you, you need to shake things off. You shake them off. You've held them too long. He said, no more. And don't keep talking about them. Talk what you desire to see. And I feel there's some young people out there. The Lord has such a destiny for you. Start to seek it in prayer. He'll show you things to come. He's a solver of knotty problems. You've got the Godhead on the inside of you. Just seek Him. And that still small voice, that unction, will direct you and show you things to come. That's how much He loves you. Personally, he loves you so much. And we just thank you, Father. I thank you for this church. I thank you that your hand's upon it. We just thank you, Father. You take it far greater and bigger and deeper. And Father, they're going to need more people and in what they do in this time and in this season and what's to come. 
We thank you much blessing on your people in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor Nick, it's all yours. Love you. Amen. Or the worship team. Church, can we please thank Margaret for that good word? Stand. We're going to sing her Come to the Altar.
blessed, aren't we? Blessed to know the grace and the forgiveness and the freedom that we have in Christ. And uh, blessed to have a wonderful message from Pastor Margaret. Let's thank her one more time for being with us this morning. Thank you. I'm sure she's very happy to stick around and uh, have a chat um, after the service. It would be lovely. And if you like prayer for anything, I'm just going to ask uh, Craig if perhaps he could make himself available down on this side here. And um, I'll be over here if you'd like to pray with me. Welcome to do that. Next Sunday, we round off our series. Uh, apologies for this, but it's back to me. We've had some wonderful guest speakers. <laughs> That's a disappointment, isn't it? But uh, wonderful guest speakers over the last few weeks, but um, I'll look forward to rounding off the series next week and uh, share some things with you about what it means to be mature as the body of Christ together. So come and join us next week. Hope to see you there. Stick around for tea and coffee. God bless you as you go into a new week. Thank you.